Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. If you would take a moment and scan that QR code and include everybody that's watching with you. If you're home and not feeling very well, we hope that you get back to healing pretty quickly. If you just tune in and watch us on a regular basis, hey, it's great to have you back too. Let's get going with our opening song. To the cross I look And to the cross I cling Of its suffering I do drink Of its work I do sing On it my Savior Both bruised and crushed Show that God is love At the cross you beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words, so lost in love I'm sweetly broken, holy surrender. make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly sections of Psalm 96. O sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the people, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. 
bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 45. 
Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loosen the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that He has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction, with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinions, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him, and went away. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
to you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So today we're looking at one of those sections in our gospel lesson that maybe, at least for our modern day ideas, brings up the whole concept of church and state. It seems like Jesus has some commentary that is going on in that regard. But I don't know that we want to necessarily sell out that this is one of those doctrinal statements or biblical statements upon church and state, although I think Lutherans have a lot of really good information on church and state, and we plan to pick that up at the Bible class this Sunday morning. So if you want a little more insight onto that, how Lutherans view that whole thing, make sure you check out the Bible class for sure. But nevertheless, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. And I think that that's what Jesus has in mind when he's talking about that gospel lesson today. So let's entertain it anyway, the whole church and state concept. Richard Wolff of the USA Today writes, the First Amendment is a mere 45 words, but it's still giving lawmakers and judges fits 227 years after its adoption. The article is a few years old, in case you're running the math, and don't use 1776 like I did, because <laughs> that's not when the First Amendment was written. But we read, First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assembly and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. We can be thankful that at least right now, our gathering on site or even online through Facebook or YouTube is possible. Although since those are private entities, Facebook and YouTube for that matter, we don't really have that protection underneath those because they're not government entities. So we can thank Mark Zuckerberg and Google for allowing us to bring you the gospel through the World Wide Web. And what a blessing that is for sure. In a way, this passage really doesn't apply to us anymore. Well, at least our church body, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, because it's not as if at the last convention there were resolutions out there debating on whether or not we should pay taxes. Our church body stances, yeah, pay your taxes, be a good citizen of the United States of America, and that's pretty sound advice. But the Pharisees and the Herodians were looking for a Messiah that would be a earthly ruler for another king like David, one that they could support and they wouldn't have a problem paying taxes to King David after all, because that is what the Old Testament was all about. So their question to Jesus runs a little bit deeper than our understanding of that question today. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? asking Jesus these questions this way. Jesus responds, of course, by asking them to show him the coin, whose image is on the coin. Of course, the image is not a religious figure at all, but rather it's Caesar. Jesus wants to get at a deeper heart of this matter with them and with us too. When he says this, therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Jesus isn't worried about taxes at all. Sure, render to Caesar what is Caesar's, but the heart of the matter for those Pharisees and the Herodians, and in that fact, us too, is rendering to God the things that are God's. And you know what that means as well as I do. That means living the life that we were called to do as children 
of God. Our pillar of living describes it this way. Christ's followers understand the freedom of living according to God's perfect plan. While the world promotes serving self, Christ's followers live to selflessly serve those the Lord has placed in our lives, including family, co-workers, peers, friends, and our church family. Remember, this pillar stands for the daily activities and behaviors of what it means to be a Team Jesus member. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the rulers of the law also had that understanding of what it meant to be a child of God. Now, certainly they focused in a little bit too deeply on the laws and trying to be self-righteous in that regard. But if we're honest, and we need to be honest, Jesus wanted to point out their failures for not following God with their whole heart. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. See, those were the two great commandments of the law, as St. Matthew records for you and for me to remember too. At the end of the day, Jesus has one charge for you and for me. That is, to live our life for him, wherever he has placed us in this life whether we're a husband or a father or a pastor or a student, no matter what it is, Christ wants us to live our life for him. In that way, when we live our life for Christ, we are remembering that we are here to serve one another, serve in our vocations, serve as he served you and me. Of course, we don't have to do this in order to earn the Lord's favor because, as the pillar was describing earlier, we are free because Christ has paid everything for you and for me. That freedom of living for Christ is because we are His and we belong to Him. And it is through His strength, through His Spirit, that we live our life following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that way we shine His love in this world wherever we go. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus till life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts He has blessed us with and entrusted to us for His kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Our announcements this week include Trunk or Treat. Trunk or Treat will be next Saturday, October 28th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We need a few more trunks and some people to help with games. If you can help, please sign up. Also next Sunday, October 29th, we will take a church-wide group photograph right before the second service. Please meet outside on the grassy knoll across the driveway opposite the new sign on the church. We would love for all to be in this picture. Also happening next Sunday, we've got a dating and marriage Bible study happening during the education hour at 9.15. This presentation is part of our Growing Faithful Families program and all are invited and encouraged to attend. Finally, Gather Around the Tables will meet next Friday, October 27th. This is open to all women 19 plus. If you're interested, please contact the office to attend. Those are our announcements.
We continue with our confession and absolution. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning in our prayers, I want to remember Judy Goodwin, who is going to be having back surgery on October 25th. Also prayers for Gina. This is Peggy and Steve's daughter that's having some back issues and... Uh, related to multiple sclerosis, and she has a appointment to see a neurologist in December. Continue prayers for Trey Johnson and his uh, battle with cancer and also a heart condition. Prayers for Troy, Jean, and Betty. Um, these are prayers for family friends of Audrey Lammers and also Laura, a friend of Carrie's, for healing from jaw surgery. Also prayers of Thanksgiving for Deaconess Kim and James as they were united in marriage this weekend. Also prayers for the Ruth Reynolds family. This is Quentin's hands grandmother that passed away. And then also Tim and Judy Bean at the sudden death of their son. These are friends of Carrie Snyder's too. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, empower your church to be obedient to following the great commission of making disciples. Pour out your spirit upon us all so that we are better equipped to share the hope of Jesus that we have with others. Open doors to our top 10 list so that we have opportunities to share our hope in Jesus. And we also ask your continued guidance in our ministry clarity process so that Team Jesus is united in our purpose of joyfully empowering others to be Christ followers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, guide the leaders of this world, and especially our nation. Grant peace and justice for all people so that even the least among us is protected from corruption and abuses of power. Watch over those who serve in our armed forces especially those in harm's way. Send your angels to guard and care for them and bring them home safely to their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician of body and soul, we thank you for all who work with you to bring healing to the sick, relief to the disabled, and comfort to the suffering. Intervene for good in the lives of those among us who are hurt and in need of healing, especially Judy, Gina, Troy, Troy, Jean, Betty, and Laura. Please be with those mourning the death of loved ones, especially the Han family and also the Bean family. Death is certainly a reminder to us all to be ready for our final call. Keep us always in your saving faith, for we have comfort in the resurrection of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you called us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Audrey as she celebrates her baptismal birthday her and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father who instituted, ordered, and blessed the estate of marriage between a man and a woman, we give you thanks and praise for this most precious gift. You care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. So we rejoice with Eric and Stacy, Steve and Darla, Matt and Kathleen, and Andy and Lisa as they celebrate their anniversary. Continue to bless them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen.